All right, and there we go. Okay, so you want to share the screen? Can I have a look? You wanted to show? You you wanted to show? Till then. Uh, I will give you the, the screen. All right. So let me let me give the screen to Prithipal. Make presenter. Oh, you are logged in from where? Yeah. Did you get my request? Downloading. Okay, in the meantime, I'll give it to Mitesh. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I can see the screen. Yeah, I can see the screen. I've forgotten my mouse. Uh, so and anybody has a spare mouse or something? No, I don't really care. Oh, I forgot the mouse thing. No, it has a trackpad, but uh, somehow the trackpad is giving trouble for now. You're not using? I can manage. Friend that point of view, I can also manage. Okay, all right. So now here we are. We are looking at his code. Can you scroll down, please? Yeah. You are the end. Keep pressing enter. And okay. What is this? This one is profit margin. Okay, you, you uh, the, it, this is that is stock problem, right? Okay. Stock uh, price problem. Okay, can you explain the approach? Yeah, so what I'm doing is that, uh, uh, so what I'm taking a dictionary into picture here. Where I take, uh, just a second, I'll unmute you. Do you have a mic or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't have a mic. Yeah, I do have. Yeah, right. right. Okay. So <coughs> I have taken dictionary here. Uh, go to, go to left. You can't see. Mm, I think uh, you may have to. Is it possible for you? I'm already at the. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, this way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and this is the dictionary that I have created for the date. Okay. Right. And what it does is basically it it differences the pre uh, previous days with today's date. Okay. So, and I'm storing it into. I'm, I'm sorry, I'll have to. All right, yeah. Yeah. So I'm 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 getting a difference between two consecutive dates. All right. I'm storing it into a dictionary. All right. Okay. Then what I'm doing is for that dictionary, if I'm looking for the negative number and I'm looking for consecutive positive numbers, and I'm just summing it up. Okay. So first you found the difference between uh, a number and its next one, right? Right. Oh, oh and, and its previous one. 
Yes. Okay. So then so I kept on moving that way. What is why? Why I'm just uh, because okay, I thought okay. what if people want to see on which day you need to sell, right? Okay. So that why will help that because I'm putting that. Okay. So first so minus second, minus you are putting in the first element. Second minus second one. Second minus one is one. Yeah. Hmm. Second minus second one minus is one. one. Okay. Then, then let's go ahead. So then what so you're doing? You are. Uh, is everybody able to read the code? Understand that piece of code. So here, what he's doing is in, in the line number 11 and line number 13. Oh, he has prepared another array with the uh, uh, differences, differences between, between the two numbers. And from line number 16 onwards, what is he doing? Yeah. Yeah. From line number 16, what I am doing here is, I see for each consecutive numbers if it is positive or negative, and I sum it up. You are for line number 17. You are iterating on the length of t dict. Okay, from right. zero. And if t dict zero and t dict one is both negative, I sum it up. If they are both positive, I sum it up. Else, I just move on. Okay. Okay. So what it gives me? It gives okay. me Else, you keep on moving on. Right. Uh, if okay, it, it, it i is less than zero, then okay. If okay, now what if uh, so? Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. Then? In the last if loop is, you know, what if uh, there are all positive numbers at the last, right? What is positive Just, number? Positive number is zero yeah. uh, initially. Then the moment you encounter a negative number, you reset positive number to zero. If you encounter a positive difference, you add that difference to positive number. So let me explain it. Okay. So pose num and leg num is zero right now. Pose num. What I'm doing is okay. between two consecutive days. Okay. So I think this would be let's say I have leg hmm. number and leg number. Okay. Right. What I'm doing here is I'm seeing if both is positive, I put it into a pose num. Okay. Right. If both is, uh, both are negative, it will be negative. Okay. And if again positive, ultimately what I'll get is an even odd number versus plus minus plus minus plus minus. Okay. All the time. Now I just need to find out the uh, you know the, the difference and that would be the what do you say? Uh, the profit margin that I can have made. So in this case, if I would have bought at this particular day and not date, that is minor day. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, how do I? What, what if it's uh, here? No, so okay. this is give, give, give me, give me, give me. So what if it's sixteen here? Yeah, it will still consider that. And it will give thirty two. Oh, oh, let's say ten. Yeah, then it gives back here. But if you see, this two is the best cell, right? You no, bought at minus eight. Yeah, you sold at nine. Nine and eight no, is seventeen. This is a difference, right? I okay. Mean, the point here. So what you're saying is, you are basically computed the delta between the next and previous. Now you got the difference. So, so in this case, minus eight. Okay, let's put the actual numbers in place. Yeah, that will be much better. So what you do is you have computed delta and one this 
so okay let me put it this way so as long as you are increasing as long as you are increasing hold on so as long as you are increasing you are keep it account right cause name is that as long as total right yeah if in case you start a minus <coughs> cause name becomes zero but do you keep a track of a cause name that what was your previous cause name previous man i am putting it uh, in one more uh, okay and then you will find out the best out of pvt so what you have done is what you have done is you found all local max mini maxima okay in all ranges you found this and then what you are doing is the moment it is start decreasing you reset it okay but uh, my question is that uh, let's say let's say here it was 2 2 and this was 1 right so yeah again we'll compute it and we couldn't see the page because yeah what we do is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 this becomes 11 this becomes 11 yeah so this becomes 12 12 you, you keep a 12 in that yeah. you minus 11 minus 11 you are not saving right No, no need. No need. You are you are only storing two plus two plus three plus nine plus thirteen. So this will be like seven plus nine. So this again will be like thirteen. Okay. Make sense? No, but how did you reach that? So you have this data. You computed twelve as one maxima. Yeah. Then one as another maxima. I will just consider the biggest profit that I could get. So you computed this dictionary. Now let's go back down. What's that? Mean? so i'm i'm putting the pause name in the dictionary oh, you which are is sorting. t dict by i'm not sorting i'm not sorting i'm just finding the max of the t dict by that becomes my profit margin yeah yeah that's what it is so you basically are trying to is run a reduce and found the maximum t dict by okay so basically it involves two sorting finding a max is itself uh, yeah it's as a log log n process not log n at not least it will be o n process but if you see uh, you know i am just sorting it on a very uh, limited list right 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 it's a very very limited approach it's a good approach i just need to find that where will it fail yeah that is yeah that is something you need to yeah. tell me I, i need to have a look at it clearly and understand it once more right different use cases can, because can anybody else tell me what you know yeah. so what he has done is he has computed deltas as long as deltas are increasing meaning meaning your price is continuously increasing you is increasing the profit so far so it's a local profit the moment and storing this local profit the moment it starts growing down that means it cannot be this this one cannot be the maximum local profit so it starts going down again and then it uh, uh, then it is resets the number and the moment again the slope goes up he makes a note of it till the point it goes up then again so this way everywhere on the slope he has figured out wherever the maximum up slope is going so the size of this up slope why what he sold here what what he sold here so this is the maximum he has computed now now out of this maxima now my question was what is poking me is out of this maxima how did you reach to the point that what if i bought at the first minima and sold at the last one how did you reach to that one here you just needed the profit margin right at least that so, one yeah so it gave you 19 here right like you bought it yeah, but uh, yeah the, till that till this point i understand so out of this what will you do now you will give the maximum not the 20 
So, okay, so hold on, hold on. So, see, we are going up from here. You are going up again up. So, total was 12. You stored 12 in the dictionary. Now we started moving ahead. You resetted the counter. Okay, the you went down. So, you reset it. Again, it started going up and up and up until the 20, which is 18. 19. Which is 18. So, what so 18, right? But the actual profit is 19. That's what I changed, made a change. That's what I That's made a change because from one, then you had encountered minima. You were going up, you started going down, and then you started went up. This will be one. Rest will be one. Okay. So now it will be 18. Yeah, 18, right? So my question is that ideally, the overall profit, that's what I made a change because I understood your approach. So, so you understood the problem here. So what is... Yes. Correct. Right, 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 right. Correct, correct. So, okay, I give you a hint, and uh, I, I give you a hint. The overall game, the overall problem can be solved by using, keeping a track of current running maxima. As in, you start from left to right. You say that my previous maxima so far has been this. And now the current encounter maxima is this. You keep track of the maxima. That you started here, okay? You started selling here, selling it, selling here. So you keep track of overall global maxima and current maxima which you are encountering. And then you keep the one which is bigger. Okay, one is one max is so far in this range. I started here, you keep on going. One is which open the whole range. So the moment you are upward, upward slope is starting, you keep a track of it. Or let me look at uh, tell you in this way. So you start from there, you took account of the minimum, minimum value so far. Minimum value so far means there are chances that you'll get an extra. And, and you keep on going, going forward. forward. And, and so you keep so track you of what is the minimum value you have encountered so far and for the global maximum. maximum. So, this, so you can actually you can solve it in this way. way. After, then you get the, you get the result. Yes, yeah, that one is okay, but the world is not fair, right? Not necessarily. The maxima will come. So here, here it is. Yeah, yeah. So no, no, it's not in your control. If the, your data is this, okay. If your data is this, then what will happen? Or your data here is let's say it starts with forty. It starts with forty. Then your logic, you have to think about the other logic. If it starts with forty. Okay. okay, then that then, uh, result is not good. good. All, right. All right. Can you can you make can a change? Change? No, this will take some time, I guess. No, it should not take time. Finish quickly. So one. All right. So this way, this way, basically, uh, I I can I can show you my code. It will take me around five minutes to code, but yeah, I can show you some other time, and I'll I'll put it there with the solution. So basically, idea is that you start moving from left, keep track of global maximum so far, one maxima, other is current maxima. So you so encountered you first minimum, minimum, you computed something, you again put an actual number, which is smaller than the minimum you had so far. So you start with a new one, so you have two counts. One, the maximum so far, other is you're hoping, you're hoping that maybe this time I get a better one. And the only way you get a better one is, if you hit 
number number is smaller than your minimum okay okay so that way or you hit a number which is bigger than your previous maximum so you have a minimum you have a minimum you compute it because i was doing the same thing but i don't know so you start from start from the beginning Okay. Okay. And you and you hit a number hit which a number is which smaller, is than, smaller than, than initially you give your, your say your, you are buying at forty, selling, selling at forty, making zero making profit. Zero That's your initial one. Then you go to the you first value. value. Check is this, is this number smaller than smaller than smaller than your, your previous, previous minimum? minimum? You say yes. yes. Is this number this bigger than your next minimum? No. Right? Bigger than maximum. So initially, minimum and maximum is 40, first number, and then you keep on moving forward. The moment you hit a smaller one, you start hoping that I'll get a better price now. Okay. And the moment you, you for short short get a bigger bigger number than your maximum, then you for short short you have got better global one. So uh, did I make my but what if the maxima is 40? Huh? You never reach 40 then, anyway. Yeah, yeah. So initially, you assume that you are buying on minimum 40 and selling. Okay. That's your one minimum. You're saying, you're saying that, oh man, I'm just making zero profit on a single number. You move ahead. You notice that there is a number which is smaller than your previous minimum. So your minimum is 40, initial one. Initial value here is 40. So your minimum is 40 and maximum is also 40 and you are making a profit of zero. Then you are moving from left to right. You said, okay, let me just come to the first number. Then you go to the next number, check. If this number is better than my previous minimum, you say, yes, it is better. And maybe this will become my part of the next better maximum. So you keep a track of this one. Okay. okay. Now you now go you to the next to number it. and check is it, is it greater than my maximum or, or smaller, than? smaller than? Okay. okay. The moment the you moment hit a you bigger hit number than your maximum, maximum. the moment the you moment hit a number, number which is bigger than your maximum, maximum, maximum previous maximum, maximum, then for sure, sure you have hit a point, point where you are making a better profit. A better profit. Right? Okay. So initial was 40 40, you keep on moving. So the moment you so you basically, so basically compare the two. One, globally, globally what has been, been my success and what has been my current success. So, so, so that way, that you can actually solve this problem, solve this problem in a single loop, loop, in a very, very I'll show you the code, code and maybe you can understand, understand from that. Piece. <laughs> right? And uh, with respect and, uh, to second problem, did anybody did attempt the second problem? I tried, but I... I'll tell you. I'll make. I'll tell you one. You can. You can. You can. He is saying that the it is echoing. Debushi is saying. Yeah, yeah. So I'm making Prithpal as presenter. My my. I just what I did was this. I didn't write any program or such. But okay. I just thought what uh, should be the approach. Okay. This is what you are trying to achieve. Yes, yes, this is what I'm trying to achieve. Correct, right? correct, correct. And this is the values which you are providing. Correct. Like I want a T to be C and then. D okay. And then this, should, this is the way it should come. 1, 2, 0, 1, 1, 0. Then, uh, no, the first number, first number should be 0, 0, 0. That's all right, yeah. So this is the kind of uh, correct. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm expecting. That. What I actually, what, what, what should be the kind of uh, logic move? Just put it in a four uh, zero till uh, four this. Limit, okay. Uh, one limit. This one limit uh, we get it from the user. Okay. And then put it in a nested loop. Right? Okay. Enough. Okay. This is this is easy. Now yeah. problem is that it could be I you have to ask writing, the user. I started writing something and. Uh, what I got edited was it was not letting me uh, edit it and create a Python. I don't know. I didn't know that. Okay. So every time I have to type it and it's making a small mistake. No, no, you you just keep on copying the code. I isn't it copy and paste? So yeah, it does. It does. Okay. Yeah, you. No, no, it will. It will. Just so go to go to here. Uh, on the properties. No, no, on the command prompt properties. Properties. So from here. Yeah, you can paste. Okay. 
whole thing that I think I guess specific code, but I just started writing that while loop and all. So I went into two loops. Okay. But I was able to get uh, some aspects. Yeah. Then it works. Okay. Okay. So the trick here is the yeah, yeah the trick here is to basically write a code just the way humans do. Okay. So what am I going to do is say you ask me to write the same code. So what I'm going to write is uh, you read the user read from the user n and m. Okay. I'll do that later. I'll just do generate gen generate. Okay, I'll say N and M. Okay, and here N is length, M is G value from 0 to M. Okay, you have to generate all the numbers from 0 to M. Okay, so what am I going to do here is I'm going to first create an array, create an array. And how? Huh? Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, okay. Let me make myself presenter and share. All right. So can you see that? So what I'm going to do? I'm going to create an array. Okay. And first of all, I'm just going to append zeros to it. For i in range 0 to m, okay, I'm going to say array dot append 0. So I filled this array with zeros. <coughs> Is that okay, Skylar? You? See that? All right. After this, I'm going to let you just. So after this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going going to do it like a human. I filled it with zeros. I'll increase the last digit, okay? And until the point the first digit reaches to the maxima, I'm not going to increase it further, okay? While array zero is uh, less than while array zero. Okay. Less than M. Okay. Yeah, this is this is you are correct in that sense. Now what I'm going to do is Till, till the point the first element is less than zero. I'll start with uh, my current location as current point is n minus one, okay? Because n is total number. If you have say three length, my indexes will be zero, one, two. So if you enter three, which means the last index will be n minus one, which is two. Okay, that is why I'm saying current is, so I'm starting from the last, okay? If if array current is less than less than m minus one, which means say m is three, which means zero one two we have to do. And if, if I say if, if this number is lesser than two, if this number is less than two, we can keep on increasing this number. Okay, we can say we can say array and that is current and we can say plus equals one all right mm -hmm. uh, still yeah. you, you can type here are you able to type Oh, Bezu does not have the mic at all. Uh, no, you have to tell him to enable uh, audio in computer. This or leave it in chat. He will understand. Leave it on chat. Debashis, is it still echoing? All 
All right. So now what we are doing is we are increasing the last digit what, wherever we encounter the current one. So right now we start, we took the array, we created an array of these n length, and then we are increasing the counter. So we keep on tick, 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 increase it, increase it, and then, uh, you know. Okay. 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 All right. So we increase that counter, and then once we have increased it, uh, we don't increase the count yet. And if, if else here, what I'm going to do is current, current, uh, current equals uh, current minus equal to one. Okay, and I'm going to reset. I'm going to reset my current value wherever. So when I move on to the previous value, how should I say? So uh, so I have got this three digit number, right? What I will do is I will delete the last number, make it zero, move it to the previous. I think a better way would be to describe it here. I'm going to do exactly the way I'm going to write here. All right. Okay. So imagine that we have three boxes. And initially, we begin with putting zero, zero, zeros everywhere. Okay. Now, that's the last point we have zero, zero, zero everywhere. And we increase the last, first we increase the last one to one, then we increase the last digit to two. And the moment we hit two, we cannot increase two. We increase the previous one. We go to the previous one. We go to the previous one, marking it at zero. Okay, we move to previous one and we increase the previous one. All right. So this is our next number. And we keep on increasing this number until we hit two, okay? And, and when we do that, we again move to the last digit, okay? All right. Okay. If we say while current is less than zero, uh, sorry, greater than equal to zero, then we do this. All right. Okay. So, uh, all right. So, what am I trying to do is? If I found that I can fit my number in the current position, I increase it. If not, I set my current location to zero. And also here I need to print, print array, all right? Here I'll also print array here after increasing it. Uh, and, and, and so now, here, what am I doing is, if my current value is less than, meaning current value can be increased, I'll increase it and print it, which means I have found a successful one. Otherwise, I'll set my current value to zero and move the current one to mi minus one, okay? Okay.
M minus one? Yes. Here? No, in the same well, same, same column. Yeah. If we find that we can increase it, we'll increase it. How we can uh, calculate the current uh, current? Yeah. This one. So imagine that initially it was zero, comma zero, comma zero, right? We increase the last one, zero, comma zero. It will come here, right? It'll be here. We'll increase it to zero, comma one. Current is still pointing to the third third value. Then again we increase that to two. Now the moment, the moment we hit, uh, the the moment we hit. Um, the the moment we hit this number, what will happen is we'll come into the second point where the current value, the current value is not uh, current value is not uh, current value is not uh, we cannot increase it any further. So we need to go back and we'll need to say zero and we'll try to increase this one. Okay. All right. And uh, so, and every time we are able to successfully increase, we will again set current back to n minus one. Okay. We are, every time we are able to increase any digit, we again increase from the back. Okay. All right, my voice seems to be breaking. Maybe the connectivity problems. All right, now we, we keep on increasing this. Does it make sense now? All right, let's try to run it. I'm just hoping with my fingers crossed that it will work somehow. Okay. And let's fix the indentation. This has to be, okay, this is not, not needed. Okay. Let me just remove this. All right. So this sounds uh, okay to you, right? The problem was generate. Okay, generate that part. We are going to discuss a little bit more today about various uh, concepts. And uh, we need to even call this method, okay? We'll take a raw input and we will say, uh, generate, generate integer of raw input. enter length and I'm going to say I think it'll be better if I just be a little less lazy and we say n equals int of this value and uh, we say m equals raw input enter max okay which is M. And then I can say N comma M. Make sense? Will it work? Do you think it'll work? <laughs> All right. So So I can say Python gender pi. It says you cannot write this way, that is correct. <coughs> what is it saying? It's saying <coughs> this is an invalid. Uh, what? I don't, you don't need to. For I.
all right so i say enter length i say 3 max is 3 so you can see in a single shot it did work did it work Zero 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 one zero zero two. Okay, a easier thing would be we say two and then one we say two. Zero 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 one one zero one one. Huh? What? Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I think zero to M minus one. In either way, it doesn't make much of a difference. Make sense to you? Uh, that's what I've said. Zero value to zero from M minus one. That's how I designed so. Make sense? Well, I'm getting better at it. <laughs> What how, what did you understand? So this is clear, right, Skylab? Yeah. This was clear? Okay. See that? Yeah. Hmm? That's okay. It's still, it's still uh, that, that shouldn't be a problem. That shouldn't be a problem. So, uh, what? I just wanted to yeah let me try one and one one and two one and thousand so we can say thousand and thousand so complete thousand to a million number so it's keeping increasing if you see the last number is increasing and there and and in the similar manner, how many digits does a car dialer has? Six, right? Car, car uh, autometer. Oh, yeah. Six. And uh, each individual can go up to ten, right? So you can see that. It's increasing the last one, then going back. And... Ten might Okay. All right. So the code is clear, right? The code is clear, right? So what am I doing is I'm doing exactly the way a person should do. Okay. I'm doing exactly the way if I have to do, I'm really, really, if I'm really, really dumb, I have to do single thing at a time. Uh, so what I'll, will I do is I'll first start always from the rightmost keep on, if i did not find a slot keep on moving to the left after putting zero in this keep on moving to the left putting zero into this and if i did not find a slot at all meaning i have hit the ceiling then i say i end okay but the moment i find the in value to increase i increase that point then again i start increasing from the right hand side that's exactly the way i have done so what i mean to say is that here the the way i'm doing is i first put 000, zero, zero increase last digit i increase this one to next one so here n equals 3 and m equals 3 meaning each one will go up to 0 to 1 2 so i will increase the last one then i'll again increase the last one now 3 so we are saying uh, m can go from 0 to 0 to 2 let's say okay now we have reached 2 now will what will i do i'll reset it to 0 will go to the next digit okay and then say ki, okay i found a slot and then print now again again i will start counting from the rightmost i found zero i increased it to one then printed it then increase it to two then printed it and now the moment i hit two i cannot increase two further so i set it to zero i go to the uh, uh, left i again set it to zero then again go to the left set it to two okay now again i print this number 
and then I start increasing it. Yeah, yeah. So you can see that now. So, Initially, I am putting zero zero zero. If you see, you are just printing an array at the end of the array, you know, all these loops. If you print array again, it will just be like two 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 or like that. Right? Hmm? You are actually overwriting the array again. I am no updating the array. Yeah, I mean overwriting. Ha ha! It's a single variable. So, it's the same array. So I'm not using any stack, I'm not using extra variable, I'm just modifying it. And it sounds like it's a single loop. If somebody asks me, if you look at this, it's very difficult to predict. Looking at it, those people who count number of loops, right? It has got one for loop, another for loop, and how much time will it take? So from that way, it's very difficult to predict that how many times this loop is going to run, unless you actually count it. So it generally runs for n into m times, but it's not obvious from this. Okay, sounds like it's a single loop. It's doing a lot of things. So this while loop keeps on running for quite some time. So until we have hit the ceiling, just let's, let's assume that it runs forever. Okay, so we start from the last point all here. If that last point, which current is like last digit, okay? If that last digit is less than m minus one, because we are going to run from zero to m minus one. If it is less than that, we increase the current by one. And then we, then what we do is the that we reset the current value to the last point, okay? We reset the current value to the last point and then we print that, all right? We print that and then once, then uh, again we go into the same loop we check the last digit again we check the last digit again if that is done we increase it we reset it to last digit again and then we keep in doing it the moment we hit that last digit has reached its maximum value then we go on to searching for next placeholder and and then and that point of time what we do is if the current is not uh, this then what we do is we, we change the current to zero. We set it to zero, which is here. And then we in decrease current by one. We move to the left. We, we are done with fulfilling it. We cannot move two to any more. So we set it to zero. We move it to the previous point. And then in, then, then a whole loop start again. Okay. So this is for generating uh, a number, okay? This is the best I could do. I couldn't write a better code than this. And, uh, and trust me, most of the programmers who even, even those people who claim to be really, really hands-on, trust me, they flunk such tests. At, at Amazon, I generally have these kind of problems where these are not teasers. These are not teasers. These are problems. Even if you memorize this code, you'll not be able to reproduce it. Okay. Unless you understand, unless you really understand, you'll not be reproduce it. Even this is not like a puzzle that uh, uh, it's not really something that you know the answer, therefore you could do it. Okay. So generally, these are the kind of questions I ask the junior engineers who I generally hire or anybody even at architect level i ask uh, really algorithm problems so uh, i remember this instance where i was hiring uh, i was interviewing a very senior architect at uh, in mobi who had come from yahoo because yahoo was laying off a lot of people that time and i gave this problem of stocks 
to the stock tick the problem it took him more than 30 minutes to solve that kind of problem so then he is good right he is good if somebody can solve any of these problems in 30 minutes or maybe an hour, an hour but i took so, 30 minutes but maybe the logic was not right okay so i here what i did was in this yeah it takes it it takes some amount of effort to basically come up with solving such a simple it's not a puzzle everybody can do it if you ask a person who has never coded ask the same problem can you generate the n digit number he says that's what i have been doing since day since the time i i, I started speaking right everybody has been counting 1 2 3 4 and all that so so that way i mean since childhood that's what we have been doing right counting so so converting that into an algorithm takes a little bit of time and uh, all right so this approach is clear hmm again okay, you want to try it out you'll have to reformat it all right so these are very simple these do not require any advanced constructs both the problems did not require any advanced concept they all they required was the knowledge of basic for loops basic array basic array and for loops but there are many other complex problems which require dictionary which require advanced data structures all right so today we are going to dive more deeper into these ideas so my start ones is pattern and where were we la last time we finished dictionaries right <coughs> let's just go with how many of you tried my regular expressions video did you in the java course on the session 1 okay all right so today we so if you have not tried attempted it attempted those two problems stock x1 and this one try attempting it after seeing this code try writing the same code by yourself trust me it is going to be easier but still it will take a uh, 10 10 minutes 15 minutes of time okay but good news but why we i'm um, discussing these things is that uh, now you will not feel lazy about trying ideas if you have tried basics of python now you'll not feel lazy you will not say that okay i'll write the logic on the paper you'll say that i will try right away okay so have that make that habit because it takes longer time to write the code on the paper okay once you get into the source it takes more time to write on the paper than actually do it in the python while in case of java it takes more times in code than the paper okay and i can i can assure you that so here uh, that is the only reason that's the only reason i switched personally from uh, uh, from java to this because when i have to solve a problem i don't have to you know struggle with too much of typing say uh, there is a general problem which uh, say when i'm an advertiser right when i'm advertising on google so i have to bid on keywords i have to bid on keywords saying i want to bid on hadoop training hadoop instruction led training and all that so i have to generally generate generate a lot of strings lot of strings this way so i fill out adjectives i fill out this and then i do a cross between the two so i'm not that great with excel so those kind of things i quickly do using scripting using python specifically and that's where the whole i got pretty used to python because of these reasons okay still i keep on switching between shell and python but yeah unless until there is a real real requirement of writing somebody puts a gun on my head and says you have to do it in java only then i do it in java otherwise i get it done here otherwise uh, i don't go to that side and uh, all right so 
today we are going to discuss tuples tuples is actually pretty small concept i will just skip the presentation in like 10 minutes maybe 5 minutes all right so we we studied arrays right so tuples might look like an array to you okay so in array we have square brackets here here x equals to square brackets while in tuples we have round brackets okay there is a reason why we differentiate between array and harina uh, yeah anything urgent acha to shabni ko call kar le theek hai main main acha acha civil civil ha ha wo ghar pe hi hai civil हाँ सिविल कॉल बैक ठीक है मैं थोड़ा सा इन द प्रेजेंटेशन हूँ ठीक है ओके ऑल राइट ग्रेट सो सो अ ट्यूपल इज बेसिकली अ कलेक्शन ऑफ एलिमेंट्स एंड ट्यूपल माइट लुक लाइक एन हेरे टू यू व्हेन वी व्हेन वी लुक एट दिस एग्जांपल्स वी से एक्स इक्वल्स टू राउंड रैकेट ग्लैन सैली जोसेफ एंड वेन आई से एक्स टू आई गेट जोसेफ एंड एंड वी वी कैन डू दैट एंड सिमिलरली वी कैन इटरेट ओवर अ ट्यूपल जस्ट लाइक द वे वी इटरेटेड ओवर एन एरे ओके राइट नाउ इट माइट लुक टू यू इट्स 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 बेसिकली एन एरे और लेस्ट करेक्ट करेक्ट सो ऑल थिंग्स आर काउंटेड फ्रॉम जीरो इन सी एज वेल एज इन पाइथन एंड सो इट्स मोर लेस लाइक दैट द ओनली डिफरेंस इज अ ट्यूपल इज इम्यूटेबल ओके अ लिस्ट इज नॉट वी कुड से एक्स टू इक्वल्स टू ट्वेंटी in a it had it been a list but here we don't okay so this is generally a good idea in many cases you will see it further unlike a list once you create a tuple you cannot alter its content all right so for example here in this example you can see that we have changed x2 from 8 to 6 earlier it was 987 now it will become 98 6 so not not 7 uh, to 6 we have changed not okay so this way we are able to mute uh, change that but in case we just like strings if we have a string called y and we try which is containing a b and c and we try to modify a particular character we cannot modify that similarly in case of a tuple in case of tuple the third example on the right most in the third example on the right most we cannot modify a tuple just like that all right so uh, who has heard about tuple algebra nobody Thank you okay okay so the tuple algebra and tuple come from that databases side okay like set theory right uh, relations and set right right that's correct so tuple do not allow the data to be sorted or arranged okay and because tuple is just a collection an unordered collect or you can say ordered collection where you cannot modify things you cannot move things around okay so that is tuple so you can see that there is a list l equals to this list and uh, when you ask uh, python that what are the various methods which are part of l it will tell you that l has a method called append count extend in the index insert pop remove reverse sort while tuple has only count and index okay because tuples are tuples are immutable and the reason for immutability is two first 
there are places where when your function is returning an object you do not want anybody to modify it that is one reason why you don't want anybody to modify your tuple second reason why you would like to use tuple is tuple is little more efficient than normal list because it does not have to provide all those methods it does not have to handle the alteration it doesn't have to handle the change okay okay they also use less memory and the performance is far better because you have to just allocate a memory once and then you don't have to change it so so when i was talking about returning multiple variables or multiple values from your function we were basically saying that our pro program will return an object called tuple right like for example we can have something of these sort and also so we can assign to two variables in a single shot just like this similarly we can do this all right so this is clear right so this is tuple this is one tuple this is another tuple but how will you identify the tuple by a name you say type tuple <laughs> if you see uh, a equals to let's say we create a instead of x and y but so does that mean that now x is uh, immutable and y is immutable? No, no, no. This whole array is immutable. Sorry, this tuple, this tuple from here to here. If you try to assign something, here we assign the full to full. Okay. We, it created it created a new tuple and and set the values. Okay. It basically, this is the address. It's, it starts pointing to this older tuple. All right. You did not. This is still immutable. But then y equal to spread, and then I could have changed. Yeah. So it's like if x equals to some string, you can assign another string to x, mm -hmm. right? But you cannot change the ith index. Correct. In the same way, a tuple today. Okay. So specifically, when you do not want end user to fiddle around with your data, you should not be what. For x, yeah, yeah, x and y you can change. X are these two variables. But if you try to uh, create a tuple a equals to this tuple, and you say a zero equals this. Then that will not be allowed. That's why I was wondering because we are not doing the definition of the tuple. It will be a equals x y equals. Yeah. So this could be a equals x comma y. Then it's a different tuple. Yes. Yeah. Yes. X and y. Those are two variables. All right. So these are tuples are quite uh, useful and they they occur all the time. Say for example. Dictionary gives you when you say d dot items. Dictionary gives you a collection of tuples. It's a collection of tuples. The items method in dictionary returns a list of key and value. Key and value is a tuple. Okay. Basically, it gives you a tuple. So, other way of visualizing and imagining tuple is in a database. Database contains rows. So each row is a tuple. Each row is a tuple, and the table is a list of tuples. Why? So th th that is how you generally visualize a tuple. And tuple is not only in in case of Python. It has been there for quite some time, and there has been always. Questions? Then why do we need tuple over list? Okay. Next is tuples are comparable just the way lists are. Okay, you can compare two tuples. 
and the logic remains same the way we compare two strings in the same way we compare two tuples if you have to sort tuple okay then you can take advantages of a list okay yeah yeah so here the the items is a list items is a list and that's what we are sorting it we are not sorting the tuples it's just that just that individual item is this comparable okay so since tuples are comparable so since tuples are comparable this way if there is a list of tuples you can sort it because each tuple is comparable to the other one all right and how are they compared you can have a look at this one so 0 1 2 0 1 2 is less than 5 1 2 how because first it will compare the 0 and 5 first it will compare 0 and 5 and since 0 is less than 5 it immediately returns from here and then in second case first it compare 0 and 2 0 and 0 okay and if if these have been equal exactly identical values the one which has the bigger length is the winner okay if we have 1 1 1 and 1 1 1 1 1 we have four ones and three ones the one which has four ones is is, is bigger than the three ones make sense to you if you have a equal to x y equal to one comma if you have a equal to x y equal to x comma y equal to equal to one comma some system right now i am accessing a dot x now you are accessing uh, can i see your screen You are not here. No. You are not on. I have to come on. The other people can also see, right? What is it? So he is saying a equals to tuple x comma y equals to one comma sasikant. So yeah. So no, not this way. You'll have to say a so just a zero a zero. A zero, say A zero. A dot X zero, okay. Or A, X Y. Yeah, yeah, or X Y. Alright. Good, good question. Uh, so what he meant to say was, if we, yeah, what he meant to say was, if we are saying A X comma Y, X comma Y equals to one comma two, then, then, is this valid? A, a zero and he meant to say is this valid good correct good good all right so yeah now we had this now you, you if you say you want to sort the values the other way around rather than uh, usual way okay you could you could basically do that also if you could construct the list of tuples from value comma key okay we could sort based on value okay and a lot of machine learning concepts whenever we are saying let's say there is a problem that given all the species of the globe you are given all the species of the globe all you need to do is find out or or Find out which species belong closer to each other. Find out those species which are in the same family. So there are algorithms which do that for you. Okay. So in all of those cases, what you do is you each species, each species, you try to present it like a tuple, like a tuple. And the order of values in this tuple will be based on based on uh, what you want to get compared first okay so 
So, for example, we want to compare all the cars. We want to find out a hierarchy of cars. I'll show you in my R's class. So, we have got a hierarchy of all the cars of the globe. What we want to do is create a beautiful tree structure in which the cars which are similar to each other are closer to each other. So, if you describe each car like a tuple, it has got how many cylinders, how many this, how many that, how many this. So, based on this, it will try to compare two tuples. The tuples which are closer to each other, it will bring them together. Okay. So, in the same way, if you want to compare, if you want to sort the data based on multiple parameters, you can form multiple using those using those values and then sort. Similarly here, if you want to sort the things by value, we create new set of tuples with value as the first one, key as the second one, and then we sort. So this is what we did. We iterated over the items, created another list containing the tuple where value comes first and key comes later. Instead of key value, what we got is each tuple. So this items contains a list of tuples where key comes first and value comes second. We prepare another list containing tuples where value comes uh, first and key comes later. And now we and we sort it, it will basically sort based on value. And we have also marked reverse equals to true. All right. Right. Is there any way like uh, we could directly append key value by default to another? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how how do you want to talk? You have four or five people into a list. Into a list. Okay, okay. So I doubt if they have that, but I'll, uh, but we can we can uh, let let me also check. Okay, so let me say you, what you want to say is, let's say I have a list, and appending a tuple like this one comma two is easier, right? Uh, but if you want to append multiple, then it doesn't take. Okay, this is what you wanted to say, right? Right? So that's not there. So I can see a dot up help. Help on A. It says it has add, contains, delete item, get. Okay. And... DIR actually, not help. We can say DIR. A list all the functions. Yeah, but there is no such thing called append all or something. Right? Okay, so you, maybe you have to create an iterator and then add. Where? Help. Help? No, we tried something which it didn't allow, right? Yeah, yeah. So what we tried is we tried to append multiple tuples in uh, append. Okay. It did not let us add. I mean, easier thing would be for I in your tuples and then add. Or you could simply say A equals list 1, comma 2, comma 3, comma 4. So we are adding two tuples into this list. Okay, good, everybody okay? Similarly, here also say we have A, right? We can say for K comma V, which is key value, we are giving K and V as the variable names in A, and we can say print K, right? So we can actually quickly iterate over very complex data structure, and we can quickly manipulate the very complex structures. Huh? All right, so yeah, this is already taken care of. 
Yeah, this is uh, uh, something which I wanted to discuss yesterday also. A for loop can be also written in a very simple manner. Okay. Like lambda function, a single line for loop can be written in this way. So instead of saying, instead of saying for key value in the items, colon, return v comma k, we could say v comma k for k comma v into c dot items. So this will generate, or, or let me take the example. So we have this list, right? We have this list. So let's say we want to quickly generate another list in which value comes before key. Okay, this is a very, very, very cool uh, this thing. We can say b equals list, and we could say value comma key. Okay, for key comma value in a. All right. Now you have b. So this is another way of writing a for loop, a quicker for loop. Same thing if we have to do is, we had to do is build the iterate and prepare another list and keep on appending this into this. If we remove the square bracket. Yeah. So let me try to do that. I, I doubt it will, it will try to create a syntax error, okay? Yeah, it's a standard syntax. It's a standard syntax. If you are inside an array bracket, if you are trying to type something like this, it will detect that you. Sounds good. So we had a this. Instead of round bracket, can we create dictionary there? Vk. Okay. Vk. So what you're saying is b equals to vk. Instead of v, uh, the yeah. vk, we can append in uh, curly brace. Curly brace. Like this? Yeah. No, no, no. The, the... Colon, v colon. Okay, okay, I got it. You Okay, so let me try it. I have not tried it. So yeah, so what you're saying is like that. It should work. No, it has still created an array. No, what I'm saying, array of objects. Yeah, it has created a set. No, not this one. Outside it is array. Inside I want to, instead of couple, I want to create object. Here? Mm. Here? Yeah, V colon K. V colon K, I doubt. No, in... Uh, yeah, it did. Yeah, you're right. Okay. So this is really nice, thank you. So yeah. You can do, it created, a it created a dictionary. In case you gave v comma k, it created a set of elements. Okay? But it didn't reverse it. It did reverse it. So if you say a, now you can see. Oh, okay. All right? Or, or you could do, or, or you could do cool things, like we could say k percentage 2. All right. In both the cases, one is the remainder. All right. So a lot of single expression for loop where you are generating one list from another. If you are generating one list from another, you can use this, or you could use simply a map map function. Put a lambda function over there and get it done. All right. So this is a cool. Uh, what we call it them them as slang. These are mostly the slang which we are using it. All right, so sounds good to everyone. So this loop is uh, clear to everyone, right? This loop you will encounter one more times this way. We can create another list like this, okay? And then there is a function called sorted. So we can use sorted over B. And, uh, not this way. Yeah, this only gave us, uh, so, all right, let me make an array. Let me make an array. So this is my new array. So if I say sort B, it will sort it. Sort it. 
in the socket. And if I say reverse equals to true, then it reverses it. Sounds good? No? So if we have A, and let's say we are further going ahead and adding some more elements, such as we are saying add one more tuple called this. Okay, and then we are sorting, uh, and then we, we are also adding one. So, yeah. So we have A, which has got single tuple and all of these values, right? Now, if I sort it, what will happen? Make sense now? Yeah. All right. So this is... Um, So any questions on tuples? Unique to Unique to Python. And probably Perl has it. Uh, and databases have that. Yeah. Almost every database has that. And Pig Script, Pig Latin has that. Okay. So wherever we are dealing with sets of data, we generally deal in always we consider as set a database table instead of saying we a table we call it a set and instead of saying uh, a row we call a tuple okay generally if you remember that whenever we have to re re uh, uh, how should i say so when we are dealing with uh, when we are dealing with the graphics and we want to return coordinates x y X, X, Y, or Z. We always used to return, create a new object called point, and then return this value. And point should be immutable because somebody else might change the X or Y. Okay, that that's where you can simply use a tuple. Wherever, if you are representing a person, and you have first name, last name, second name, and you don't have patience of create sitting and creating a new class then you better use tuple okay so those kind of things basically a tuple each tuple should generally represent a single entity okay unlike an array unlike a list it represents a collection of entities tuple represents a single entity with different features all right Cool. So no questions here? All right, now we go ahead. So regular expressions, uh, those who are not comfortable with regular expressions, I think I would take my uh, usual class rather than a Python one. We, I mean, Do you use regular expression ever? No? I don't use any extra features. Okay. <laughs> I know regular expression. Okay. Do you, you don't use it in... Uh, For example, validating email. Validating email address, okay. I use in one project where uh, we do validator mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So no, uh, other, you never used it for personal use, no. No. Okay. Okay. So basically, whenever you have to do a lot of text manipulation. Yeah. Okay. Ra actually very powerful. Ra rather than. Rather than every time, every time waiting for somebody to type code, you can basically write a regular expression which does everything. So regular expressions that you have used, Rajesh, Rakesh, no, not even any of the security tools. You you don't use Python script based uh, any any vulnerability scanner. I actually use C coding. C coding on. Buffer flows and all that. that there is a stack one, right? Where you can create your own bu buffer overflow. There is this tool, what do you call it? 
even if you get i mean multiple code but not need to uh, do the syntax correction right right so in those cases mostly um, that why would you yeah. want to use python uh, is that see personally whenever i look at lot of exploit codes whenever i look at a hack a code that can hack into systems before running it i generally go through the code what it does and interestingly lot of scripts these days people write in python do you encounter on on stack or this uh do you follow bug track b u g r t r a q so on that lots of people keep on posting the the their proof of concept in python yeah i, I saw lot of i i never do okay so that's where you, one is uses for you, you would be in python second would be that similarly regular expression you never use to identify a header identify a footer let's say you got a big file so in in my college days so uh so we used to some of us used to basically grab the keystroke of all the people and out of those keystrokes uh, somebody asked me that we have got now 1 gb file of keystrokes of all the people can we write a way in which quickly we can find out the credit card numbers of people all right so one way was to sit go, sit and read through the all the keystrokes other one was to write the program to identify credit card and third quicker way was to use regular expressions okay a pattern matching okay and that's where the regular expressions come come as very handy in day in day out you will utilize regular expression very quickly let's say there is a text file there is a text file in which there are two columns a and b both are colon separated colon separated now what you want to do is you want to just pick up the second column and uh, swap the values so what am i talking about let's say we have this nice text file we have uh, say sandeep giri and we have uh, say ryan giri what i want to convert this into i want to convert second column into first and first column into second and separate them by semicolon rather than a tab what should i do there are say similar entries are there around say 10000 okay 10000 lines are there what should i do what i am trying to do is i want to write it like giri giri and then comma sandeep giri comma ryan and so on so what will you do quickly how would you do it in normal life if i give you a file which is tab separated i want it uh, it has only two columns first is first name second is sec uh, second name all i want is second name comma first name that's all what will you do for uh, open Uh, yeah not pro i mean not programmatically normal life because programmatically again you'll have to yeah, just before we reverse the tuple right yeah so tell me a practical approach yes you write a code in, you will copy paste this in excel okay good then okay okay good 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 billion actually in no, file search dialog box no that, that's a good good enough approach okay now let me make it a little bit more complex all those lines which are ending with a phone number only those lines we want to keep in this one rest we want to delete or uh, or let's say uh the, the my problem is generally when people sign up for my classes uh, i mean there are like hundreds of people who sign up for my classes and what do i need to do is i need to clean that their phone numbers okay i need to clean the phone numbers now how would i clean the phone numbers so or, or here let's say people might write a phone number with plus 
people might try, write i mean there are multiple mm-hmm. formats right so you have plus 9195389989962 or people might write in this way right or people might write a phone number this way or people might write it a continuously or people might write this phone number like this also right mm. and yeah then people might try write it like this right now there are at least uh, i can actually tell you that there are at least uh, 10000 ways people can write the same phone number okay now you have to detect the phone number you have to find out only the phone numbers from the file what will you do or you need to just clean this phone number you have to just clean the phone number and convert it into this line number 6 what will you do in that scenario am i the presenter yeah all right so if you have to do clean up the phone number and all sorts of this what will you do right and i have to write a regular expression yes so all of these pattern recognition yeah and pattern recognition just very powerful thing very powerful and lot of lot of problems can be solved using pattern recognition it just there are few ha- handful of problems which you cannot solve using pattern recognition such as evaluating a mathematical expression like 1 plus 2 plus 3 and 4 those kind of things are very difficult to solve using pattern recognition using regex but lots of problems where there is a pattern you have figured out a pattern which is repeating you can actually solve that all right now we will discuss this problem again and similarly validating an email finding out whether an email is valid or not by just looking at it we as a person we can simply say that any anything anything which has at at the rate and should have you know a dot b kind of a format after at the rate should not have spaces should not have uh things like uh, semicolon in the email id and also should not have double quotes in those so those are specifications now if you try to write a code for identifying a regular email id or a phone number it will take a long long time to write that code and that code will itself be fairly buggy and that's where the regular expressions come into play and this is something a general topic so every every mba or every sales guy or anything who joins us i make sure they learn excel microsoft excel they learn regular expressions otherwise the who i mean because 90% of the problem they can actually solve by themselves rather than asking to hire programmers okay because i hire an mba graduate from iim and he tells me that can somebody clean up these phone numbers these phone numbers are not this and i said then no this is not the way we operate you have to clean your data by yourself and uh, if you you want i can give you a session on regular expressions now so whether you are a programmer or into management no churning data figuring out pattern is something every every person who deals in data has to do okay and that's the role of whether you are a programmer or not regular expression is sort of mandatory as per me okay so regex regex p this is the one it's a formal way of writing a pattern if you have you used dir star by star everybody used dir dir star by star so that was the most primitive form of a pattern saying uh, saying i'm looking for all the files starting with anything but start dot bat means anything dot bat right but now the things might become complex say you want to look for the files which have year in them 
and how does the year look like four digit number where the first digit can be one or two and and second digit can be eight or nine right so when you have these complex pattern in those cases the regular expression comes like a breeze and in this uh, say next 10 15 minute session i'm going to assure you that you'll be able to do all of the regex by yourself all right i think a better thing would be since you are not familiar with regex i will open my traditional not the python one i'll open my uh, regular expression session all right so you have to find uh, quickly find all the words that look like credit card numbers in a big text file you have to check if the email id is valid clean up a phone number or something like that so for example uh, i download a lot of movies and let me just mute it Basically, in a normal life, you can utilize all these concepts if you if you practice really well. Why does it keep running? I'm unmuted. Yeah, I'm muted. All right. So, all right. So everybody remembers this, yeah? See this? Okay. Do you remember this? Yeah. All right. So this was the beginning of the regular expressions. These are wildcard characters. Now, in regular expressions, before we move on to complex, let's build a step at a time. So pattern here was here. If you remember this, it said dir star dot star, meaning anything, then dot, and then anything. Yeah. So instead of this asterisk here. We have new form of things now. Okay, we say dot means a single character, any character, but single times. Meaning, if I say a dot b, it may it can match with a c b, a b b, and it will not match with a b and a a b. Okay, so I'll show you. I'll keep on showing you that. So if I say a c b and and something something else and i say control f every editor has regular expression by the way okay every advanced editor has uh, uh, this thing so you can have a look at so uh, you can say a dot b okay and here i pick regular expression well whether you are using edit plus whether you are using a notepad plus plus or you are using sublime text and uh, even the google docs has now the these things okay so now acb matches it you can see that acb has matched but the other one does not match all right so that's the meaning of a single character similarly if we say dot a it will match with a a x a but it will not match with single a all right we are matching with now question to all of you quickly based on what we have just learned a dot 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 b dot dot c matches with which one and and no no awesome awesome yes answer is first regular expression which matches with these can you tell me a regular expression a star oh, anything a dot, dot, a dot dot c anybody else excellent brilliant just brilliant all right everybody with me see there will it match it dot 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 you miss it <laughs> don't miss it dot, 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 don't miss dot, don't miss this part so question here was this one yeah 
dot means a single character okay so a dot 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 b dot dot c matches with which one of these one great so you are clear about this right second is uh, which what will be the regular expression you will write which will match with all these three there could be multiple i'm um, a dot dot, dot 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 will dot dot will met 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 yeah brilliant thank you oh only these thing ha uh -huh. all right great now any character in the range is represented by square bracket when we say i only accept a to a o e or something like that Uh, we want to say we want to find out all the words that start with that start with uh, with a vowel so we can say a e i o u in square brackets and that will match with a e i o u okay similar like for example if we say we can inside that square bracket either we can write things like this we can say a capital x capital y or z so this square bracket will match either x or y or z dot match with everything this square bracket will match with a single character single character which is either of these meaning it will match with a capital x capital z this this but it will not match with this this right similar way we can say a then A to Z, which means. In last example, yes. we will pick only one character. Uh, yes. Yes. Bracket. bracket means single character. Single character in this range. All right. That's what it is. So we have A, 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 B, A, Z, and this will not match. Why? Because it wants that there should be something here. Third one is that we are saying. it can be 0 to 9 or a to z or small a to z so it will match with any of this but it will not match with any of this all we are saying is all we are saying is anything which is alphanumeric single character alphanumeric it will match with a single character which is either alphabet or the numeric principal you are clear with this so basically anything right. within bracket Yeah. We'll take one, one, one character. character. So how many characters will it take? Two. Two characters. Perfect. So two digit numbers. So all right, clear to everyone. So square bracket means a single character, and we'll say anything within this range it'll match. Now, question to you: S A E I O U and D will match with which of these? And 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 yeah, and and and. Okay, first and third. Why not count? Perfect. Thank you, Baju. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, because it matches only with a single character all right why can't i turn it off man how to go to next slide next go to next item alt down alt yeah i think this is better yeah all right in this we have talked about okay yeah. a uh, start bracket ed Yeah. Start bracket ED, uh, ED, yeah, ED, and ED. Okay, so 
the regular expression that matches with this is Bezu, are you there? Yes. All right. So, yeah. So, regular expression which matches any of these is anybody? Okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, bracket uh, E D R D. No. Okay, you can type. Okay, oh. yeah. But All right, all right. So, basically, you can't write it that way. Yeah, because we have a, 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 a square bracket means. A single character okay you know what you have written it means your a this will ma match with a comma C it might match with a D C it might match with a E C and it might match with a yeah that's it so basically a, a, a single square bracket means a single a single character okay so and you can embed, right? So what you're saying, A E D, A E E D. All right, all right. Good. Hi, Shashikant. <laughs> Test successful. <laughs> it's getting recorded. Yeah, it's getting recorded. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Sridhar. That is brilliant, and thank you, Rakesh. That is also correct. No, but but yours will also match with uh, not match with this one. Last one is correct. E, no, yours will match with E A E D E C. No, your yours will match A E D E D C. Ah, for you it will be five characters. Correct? Yours is one character A, one character C, and then one first bracket, second bracket, third bracket. Yes. So the one which uh, Sridhar has posted is correct. Can anybody else give? I just give it to Okay. There are many, many answers to this. There is no fixed answer. You could write uh, things like A E D E D C or A D E D E C or A A to Z A to Z C or A dot dot C or A D E D to E. You see D dash E. The way we can write A to Z in the square brackets. Similarly, we can say B dash O or C dash A dot dot C. <laughs> All right. So there is no single right answer to this. There could be multiple right answers. All right, brilliant. <laughs> no, I think uh, all we require in Python case also a little bit more patience and uh, maybe more exercises. Okay. Okay. We had one subject theory of computing. In that entire subject, only regular expressions are interesting. Yeah, the whole automated theory, right? Yeah, correct. So, other than this, I generally ask, uh, I give a two hours test to, to to my candidates who is ever I'm interviewing. I ask them to write the code which understands the regular expressions. Okay. Okay. And even the most senior engineers, they fail to that. Okay. And uh, yeah, so because uh, understanding regular expression, it's just a recursion. All you have to write is recursion everywhere. Okay. All right. So this is next is not in the range. Okay. The way we said a and a to z, we can also put a 
this caret character which means a followed by some character which is not in the range okay so you can say which means that this a to z will match with capital a capital a capital a capital i capital z plus it matches with that sorry no no the, the third one is wrong third one is wrong third one is wrong okay now it, okay so it should be it can match with that but it will not match with a capital small a and so on sounds good all right now in the second example in the second example we have uh, 0 to 9 means first first will match with a single character single digit third will match with anything but the digit sorry this one this one will match with anything but the digit so this expression will match with here we are not talking about searching we are saying exact match okay so here it matches with 0a 1x 4 plus but it will not match with 0 0 1 2 3 4 or simplify all right rakesh yeah with me similarly we can put a lot of ranges in square bracket and put not in the beginning that means anything but not this okay slide is free now in no big data yes okay anything but not this all right and that's what we have so this means this will match with plus minus equals to or maybe more but it will not match with a capital a and zero sounds good now next step now next step here uh, for time being i want you to forget what you learned in in dos what you learned in dos whatever you learned in dos about a strict just forget it here asterisk means here asterisk means any number of times the previous character the previous character the the one which is just before asterisk which means a asterisk a asterisk b means zero or more times of a okay a asterisk asterisk b means zero or more time of a which means it will match with b it will match with ab it will match with aab it will match with aaab and so on but it will not match with abb c cb zb or something now next step if we have to say anything we say any character which is dot and then asterisk means any character any number of times zero or more number of times asterisk matches the zero or more number of times good sounds good to you so even uh, that is yes also right yes yes this will match with space also dot matches with space and any number of space whether tab or anything okay what a star a star b means when whenever we say asterisk right usually what we did asterisk means anything here that's not the case asterisk means any number of the times of the previous character to asterisk what is the previous character to asterisk a here previous character to asterisk is dot so any number of times a has occurred zero or more which means b matlab meaning a has occurred only zero times ab a has occurred one abb uh, sorry aab aaab aaab and so on any number of times a followed by b similarly if we uh, understand the dot dot meant any single character if we say dot asterisk means any single character zero or more number of times meaning anything correct it also match with nothing zero characters sounds good dot means zero or more asterisk means zero or more dot means single character you remember it will not match blank right it'll match one character should be there right no asterisk means zero or more okay the way a asterisk may b match with b right. similarly dot asterisk b will match with b dot 
एस्ट्रिक विल मीन्स एवरीथिंग ओके साउंड गुड नाउ जीरो और मोर नॉट वन और मोर प्लस मीन्स वन और मोर सो एनीबडी so asterisk can meet okay i have got answers from baju also one two okay one two four okay why why not third we said zero or more characters whether why why asterisk will match with without even why similarly even if there is no character s and d will be matched okay Oh, sorry, one, three, four. Not two. Not two. Not two. Why not? More, right? Why not? Oh, yeah. Asterisk means zero or more of this character. Oh, okay. So, which means uh, it, it could be. Uh, it, it will also match with a uh, s a e i o u or something like that. Okay. Or it could be s o o o o o o o and d y. Correct. You tell me. The question is to you. Which one? So as per you, first one, but not second one. Should be all. Why not? Second, you know, what I was thinking was after you have one character, it just. So range means means a single character, any of these characters, right? Yeah. Asterisk means any number of these these any characters, any number of any character. Any number of any of these characters in the range. From zero to so, so zero to infinity. Is, uh, taking this four from. Yes. Bracket, yes. So that's why you went. Yes. So no. So when you say this one bracket, actually, if you say a strict, uh, you know, it's like zero or more of. That and zero, zero or more of any of these characters. <coughs> so why zero or more of why, right? When we say y is strict, means zero or more of y. Sounds good. Sounds good. Four. It means we said zero or more means zero of this is s and d. Zero of this. Okay. <laughs> See, this is powerful. this is powerful this is powerful and there the pa- power of the whole game is that by writing this kind of pattern you are able to concisely represent the logic once you get used to it you'll be okay it's just that right now that hindrance of asterisk character right asterisk dot asterisk which we learned in dos is impeding here so that means it will be s a e i o u and d y y y y yes yes it to the infinity similar you see it also means s a a a and d right that is the challenge we write expression to match something that it matter addition to also it may match something correct so correct you have to be very it you have to be very very cautious so this is just to exercise so that you understand the meaning of asterisk okay sounds good no it depends it depends on what you need it all depends on what you need all right okay so answer is all everybody agreeing see there yeah all right i got some questions from there baju thank you baju brilliant all right send your answers to all because anyway everybody is seeing your answers all right now brother of asterisk is plus the only difference in asterisk and plus is plus matches only one or more while asterisk matches zero or more okay plus means one or more all right that essentially means uh, if we say a plus b a has to at least be there once but it can be up to infinity so a plus b will match with a plus b will match with ab a ab A A A A A B and so on. No. No. Because B because because 
we have not put plus after b right yes, a plus okay. b plus b hello but what about b a no right no. no no okay so plus means one or more characters of the character which it is preceding right all right sounds fun sounds fun yeah so it will not match a plus b will not match with b while a asterisk b will match b but a plus b will not match b c or any of this now this one says dot star, dot plus means at least there has to be a single character okay so when we say when we say you have to enter something in comments you can always say that comments should match with the dot plus okay you have to just enter a single character sounds good to you so this was asterisk asterisk means zero or more of the preceding character and plus means one or more of the preceding characters now question to all of you is what principal what does it match with i have got baju is saying something yeah yes baju say question is s followed by any vowel and then plus which means one or more of that vowel and d and s y three it will match and what about first one no you got this one so s or y right right correct yeah first one s or y any number of times asterisk means any number of times zero or more zero or more which means even if this does not come that means it will match yes so you he you, he says that uh, something and bachu is saying 1 2 3 okay brilliant sridhar agreeing with it jagdish but i thought in the bracket only one will match it. only one so when we say asterisk right it it means zero or more of that range okay the character in that range yes that is rocking man yes So you have to write a new project or Python also. So you have to write a new project. Python is just a project. Yeah. So this is Python project, Python only, right? No, no, we have our own. Okay, okay. When you are installing Python. Yeah. So it's just non IBM. Uh. What option? Yes. You missed. <laughs> So asterisks you are clear, ranges you are clear, plus you are not clear. Yes. Plus means one or more characters. Asterisk and plus are uh, brothers and and uh, that one consider zero also. Here ha there has to be at least one character. Therefore this is not valid because okay, all right. Correct. At least one. That one was zero or more. Here it is one or more. Because plus we are saying plus, right? So either at least at least one of these A E I O U have to be there. At least one. Correct. All right. Everybody comfortable with this? Moving on. Next question to all of you is: See, this is the benefit. See. Baju is though he is attending from remote now he'll uh, so that's why all, all my online sessions people are more attentive <laughs> all right now rather than saying zero to more or something like that or one or more we can also say n to m number of times say in a year there are four digits or two digits correct so or or me we can say that a phone number is either nine digits or uh, uh, 10 digits or eight digits those kind of ranges we could say using curly brackets we could say a curly bracket 1 comma 2 meaning a can come either once or a can come twice okay 
if we say a 1 comma 10 a can come either one or twice or thrice or four times or five times or six times seven times eight times nine times ten times all right so that is the curly bracket or if you say in curly brackets this meaning what that number or more n times or more no no this means exactly n times this sorry for example one comma four is there yeah. Can I take yeah. Yes. Okay. So, if you want to say specifically that I'm looking for a number which has 10 digits, what will you say? You will say 0 to 9, curly brackets, 10. I'm looking for a number, number containing 0 or more. And this. Or in this, you can also say this first digit should be 1 to 9, and the rest of the digits is so you can say 1 to 9 in one square bracket in second square bracket you can say 0 to 9 and then curly brackets you can say 9 then this becomes a 10 digit number okay where on the first digit if we don't have a zero make sense everybody okay with this baiju last one yeah so it says a 10 digit number oh I, that's actually yeah, that's what i'm saying i did not notice so yeah because these slides are you know something I have prepared yeah, very for 10 digit bracket. number uh, it should be 11 digits no 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 what? so it means only this range so <coughs> 9 will apply only on this yeah, first, first one is 1 to 9 okay, one. of 1 character and these are 9 characters 9 times this 1 times this ok so Zero, one, two. It is actually one, two. Yes. So it will not match with zero, zero one, two. One, two. Okay. Zero, it will not match with any number which is starting with zero. zero okay. It's saying that first character has to be zero and rest of the character uh, has to be non zero, one, two, and nine. We could also say uh, something like uh, no, not now, but then it will be too much of a problem. So this will be easier. All right. So this is clear to everyone. Yeah? Yes. Okay. This caret character has another meaning. This character caret character, if you put it inside the range, it becomes not of the range. If you say not A to Z means non -alpha alphabetic character. But if you put it outside the range in the beginning of the line, it means when you are in searching in the editor, right? It will basically start searching for the first character in the line. When you are searching, not matching. When you are matching, then full pattern will be matched against full pattern. Okay? Full pattern will be matched against full string. So, match is when... The, the, there are two, two ways you can use regular expressions. One is, one is by the way of matching, you can say, do these... This is string and this is string match. That's one thing. Second way you can use your expression, given a big text, match this pattern in this text as many times as you want. Okay. So there are two things. One is matching, another is searching. So when you are searching, you might want to say that find my pattern in the beginning of the line. You might want to say find my pattern in the beginning of the line. Okay. And in those cases, you can say caret in the beginning. So let's say I want to find out, let's say there is a text file. And let's say something, say something. Okay. Now in this file, I'm looking for only the lines which are starting with a vowel. Okay. I'm looking for the lines which is starting for a vowel. How will I find that? Carrot, square bracket, A E I O U, and A E I O U. All right? And then dot asterisk. Okay? You can see that? It's matching with first line, it's matching with the fifth line. All right? Right? This is good, right? This is useful. 
you useful through lots of things we do similarly if you want to say find out end of the line if you want to find out which are the lines that are ending with ending with a vowel okay instead of dot stuff you can also give plus right what cap at the beginning yeah and then the dot instead of dot star you can put plus right Mm. Where, where, where? Yeah, dot plus. If you put, that means there should be one vowel followed by at least one character, right? We we want to match with the line even containing a single vowel character. So what you are saying is instead of this, say so then then it will not match with I. If you put a plus here, then it will not match with capital I. Remove dot. Remove dot. Plus. Plus, that means it should li whole line should only have vowels. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. It should be a line full of vowels. Okay. Yeah. So here a little bit uh, slip and uh, your regular expressions meaning changes. Yeah. Okay. Let's say I am looking for all the lines. Which are uh, say uh, you know uh, ending with a vowel. Okay. So what I do is what I do A E I O U A E I O U and the beginning nothing. All right. So you can see only the fifth line is matching. Perfect. Everybody okay with this? when we have to match specifically while searching while searching we can put these characters in your text editor or wherever you are using this is very handy and very useful can you give uh, open text editor uh, something you give yes something no keep the text open. expression uh, we change the text change this no the text file text file oh, text okay file. Fourth line, you give a fourth line something, yeah. Now we because at the beginning we have to give a. No, no, it's matching, right? Yeah, it is matching. Yeah. It was behind this box. That's why you could not see. Should match. You can see that. All right. So everybody happy? Huh? Dollar means end of the line. Dollar means end of the line, meaning if we are looking for something at the end of line, we can say something followed by dollar. It will only match the last line. This is good for searching when you are searching for a pattern in a big text. Then you can say, find me this pattern in the beginning of the line or end of the line. If you put caret character, that means beginning of the line, and dollar character means it's end of the line. All right. All right. So things are going to get a little difficult as we move. All right. Now, now the way we had ranges, and we could put ranges meant always a single character. Can we? Hmm? This is, is this is this extremely boring? No, no, I, okay. I, I, okay. I, I, okay. No, no, I just to finish in like two more slides. No worries. It's not that that big a thing. The thing important here is it's not too much of a description. These are few things only. It's just that you can combine these things together and you can do wonders. For example, here, let's say you want to find out. Many repetitions of this pattern. Okay, so you can put in that bracket and say A B C plus. So that means any number of times an A B C occurs, one or more. So A B C A B C A B C A B C, and that way. Now similarly, if you are looking for sa 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 re re ga ga ga, then you can put this, and that should work. So if you if you look at it. We should have one or more of sa, then any number of times re meaning come or don't come, and then ga and then plus. Okay, ga is mandatory. Say sa is mandatory, 
while ray is optional now you can say sa sa ga sa re ga sa ga it will match with any of these sa re re ga it will match yes but it will not match with sa re re ga sa will also not match first has to be sa has to be sa last has to be ga ga no 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 last has to be ga yeah. at least because that's also plus right there has to be ga right sare ga sa no 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 so meaning first one it should begin it should begin with sa end with at least one ga it should begin with at least one sa it should be, end with at least one ga and it can have any number of zero or more optionally ray with the space note the space sa ga re sa 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 re re ga ga is also a valid pattern sa ga re sa that's not valid because it has to end with sa sa re ga sa any number of, one or more sa ga ha that's valid no it will not work it will not work it will not work so let me let me try all right <laughs> so you are saying yeah settle sa sa ga ga re re sa sa ga yeah no. and what what we are matching we are saying sa and and then plus and then re re star it only matched with the beginning and end let's me put it the, this way okay beginning of the end of the line now this will try to match the whole thing it says not found okay and let's say another line sa 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 ga sa, what was that sa sa re re ga ga okay now now let's try to match the second one th 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 yours is also not matching why last one 11% it will be Put an angle there. Sa sa re re ga. Oh oh, there is no space here. Yeah. So here you have to put a space. Here you have to put a space. Okay. Now you can see. Here also you need to put a space because there is a space. Okay. Now you can see that. All right. great great so all of you are comfortable with this now look at the third one third one is little more complex it's very it's little complex so what does it mean it means ab any number of times followed by one asterisk okay zero number of times and then all of this pattern re replicated multiple number of times which means ab1 ab ab1 okay or ab ab ab1 and then any number of that should be ab1 ab ab ab1 or maybe ab ab ab1 ab ab ab1 so one is optional all right so this is how you can group multiple regular expression and then put all these patterns as tricks and also curly brackets you can put around here sounds good sounds good to you now a little more step now there are special characters we all know these so if you are looking for new line you can write slash n if you are looking for tab you can write slash t if you are looking to you are looking for exactly somebody has typed slash t in those cases you will have to put slash there let's say in this file somebody has put slash t okay there are two things one is you have put a tab b right in those cases if you put slash t then tab will match you can see that tab it has found the tab yeah slash t if you are looking for exactly slash t then you can escape as a special meaning now the meaning of slash has been escaped by putting another slash and now it will look for that particular slash okay in the similar manner if we are having these slashes and we yeah we can say slash and re replace it with say semicolon so we can simply replace it with semicolon all right so slash it has got special meaning 
okay that give a special meaning to slash and slash t slash and and slash if you want to re replace the meaning a special meaning of slash you put another slash and so on okay so this is very important to all of us so if you are in java or in your python code and you are matching a regular expression and you are looking for exactly slash n then you will have to four times slash and then n all right getting my point yeah so because first slash the meaning uh, the meaning will be consumed by python second slash the meaning will be consumed by regular expression all right what about last thing? so this is okay now this is something interesting this i will give a demo and then you will understand what is the meaning of this let us say we had a nice file with uh, say sandeep giri sandeep tab giri and ryan tab giri i wanted to swap them i wanted to swap them in the sense it should become giri comma sandeep okay how would i do that so first let me match it what am i trying so my first name is dot plus followed by a tab then dot plus and end of line and beginning of line make sense to you anything tab anything and dollar that is what we have in the file now if i want to replace i will say dollar 2 or let's say comma dollar 1 here meaning of dollar is the, the round bracket also means something it captured what that's what is stored in this variable so dollar 1 means the first bracket dollar 2 means second bracket and if it is nested nested also the one which starts first is the dollar 1 second which starts later is That time very good point it no no it will be dollar one dollar okay. right right his right. question is interesting if you think about it you can nest these square brackets you can have one square the way we showed earlier we nested one square bracket and another in those cases the leftmost one is dollar one second one second uh, from the left you will count and that's what you will say okay so now here is clear so this will basically replace giri comma sandeep and giri comma ryan okay so basically whenever you do a lot of text parsing every time lot of people keep on sending me can you create these users like your 12 13 people have to be created quickly in those cases all i did was i put me in my copy pasted in text editor cleaned up your email ids and then separated them by tab and then moved it so basically regular expression these things make us um, make our life really easier so square brackets the, the round brackets other than grouping multiple expressions together multiple things after which we can put play a plus or a star they also capture and we can refer that capture back dollar 1 means anything captured by the first bracket dollar 2 means anything captured by second bracket and that's what we did here you see it quickly replaced all of it sounds good now we could do a lot of magic we could say we we could also say things like um uh you know how should i say all right we we could ignore the second part completely we could only say that just leave it and so on okay so these are the few nice things about regular expressions and these are very powerful in some editors the way we refer to, to it as dollar 1 dollar 2 in some editor in, in, in specifically microsoft ones you will have to use slash 1 slash 2 instead okay now again as a, as a, as a whatever we study today dot means a single character everybody okay dot means single character a square a character ranges means square brackets okay meaning a single character in that range it will match not in the range it will match a single character which is not in the range single character not in the range zero or more of the preceding characters is asterisk one or more of preceding character is plus and zero or one of preceding character is question mark this is something which we have not discussed 
So if you are just looking for zero or one, you can put question mark. So A question mark B will match with B and AB. That's all. Then if you are looking for specifically N to M, then you can use this and curly brackets M means it's only M number of values. Then you can group the patterns in a bracket and then apply apply any of these on that, okay? And uh, the, the carrot character means beginning of the line, dollar means end of the line, good for searching for the text, okay? So exercise, try to think about uh, this one, this is a little tough. Write an expression to match the email address. Write a regular, regular expression that basically tells us whether an email address is valid or not. Okay, and what should what is an email address generally in your words? At, at the rate, it should contain at the rate. Uh, dot. Where should it have dot? After at the rate. Both at the rate, then some text, then dot. Yes, at the rate, some text, and then dot. Okay, and then, and then some, some text, character. some character, and and anything else. That some character dot com should be how many letters at least? This could be any. Uh, a single letter, at least two letters. Two letters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, TLD, we call it TLD, the top level domain, it should be at least two letters. So these are all valid, while this is invalid. Can you spend some time? Some at, at valid. Valid. This is invalid, no, no, while no, this no, is no, valid. No, fourth, one. fourth one is valid, yes. Have you not seen the government people's email ID ever? You have not seen? You have not seen? You have seen bsnl.vsnl.co.in? Dot nic dot in okay and and yeah those kind of yeah, those are those are you know valid domains yeah and this dot also remember this this dot is a valid email address yeah it's a valid email address so whenever you type www.google.com tld means you can also type www.google.com dot Okay, there's a, there's a grammar I'm talking about, strictly grammar. So uh, when you say google.com, you can also write google.com dot. Okay, that's a valid email address. Uh, domain is uh, correct. That is because the, when you do the DNS lookup, that's how it happens. All right, so that's pretty much about regular expressions. Though this is a bonus class. <laughs> okay. It was sort of a bonus class. So now we'll have a really hectic afternoon. What? 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 This is also available on uh, your. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so 90% of the data churning can happen without writing a single line of code. And none of the data scientists or none of the data engineers actually write too much of code. They mostly use the regular expressions to clean up the data, to churn the data, translate the data. And uh, as part of whether you are using Pig, Hive, or MapReduce, anywhere, you can, everywhere you can use the regular expression even in the text editor, even in the spreadsheet as of today, everywhere you can use regular expression. It all started with the Unix commands, SED and all, but now it is widely acceptable by everyone. All right? All right, so let's take a break and come back. So this presentation also in the old one itself, in that old one, you log in, in the first session, you have this video recording as well as you have the... For this session, you have new utilizing uh, password. No, in the same old one. So now break for lunch. Yeah. So should we break a break now for lunch and then come back uh, at 1 o'clock? We'll come back at 1 o'clock? It's 12.30? Yeah. Okay. It'll take one hour? Okay. Play sandwich. Okay. 
Awesome. So this was good.